Welcome everyone to this Prepare for Summer Reading with Teaching Books webinar. Just a little bit of history about teaching books. We were founded to connect authors and illustrators to professionally vetted resources for books being read in classrooms and libraries. In 2021, we joined Overdrive, an ebook and audio company. If you use Sora or Libby, you're familiar with Overdrive, and now we have the ability to connect books and resources. So Overdrive has the books and Teaching Books has the resources. Please reach out if you have any questions about that. Today, we're going to focus on summer reading and finding new inspiration and for how you can easily integrate Teaching Books resources into your summer reading programs. We are going to locate lists of summer reading titles, whether it's CSLP, iRead, or even designing your own. We'll be talking about creating your own list. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go to teachingbooks.net. And this is what the homepage on teaching books looks like. If you are at a school, you'll notice up here, it will say school. If you are at a public library, it will say library here instead of school. Same resources, the format's a little bit different just to help speak better to the audiences you work with but you will see the same resources and be able to search the same way. You can see right now I'm welcomed by South Carolina State Library. When you go to teaching books, it will IP authenticate you with what building you're in. So depending on your district or public library name, that's most likely what you will see. Before we even jump in to the summer reading lists and some of the resources there. I just want to show you a quick resource that we have here on teaching books. I'm going to start by just searching for a title up here and I'm going to search for fallout by Steve Shankin and select it here. One resource we always talk about using to feature titles with. So if you're thinking about featuring those summer reading lists are what we call meet the author recordings. And I'm going to open this. And you're going to hear Steve Shank and stop, talk about the background and inspiration for his creation of Fallout. But what I love about these is they're like a book talk, just a way better book talk than I could ever do because the author book talks their book. So let's listen. Hi, my name is Steve Shankin, and I'm the author of Fallout, Spies, Super Bombs, and the Ultimate Cold War Showdown. Fallout is a follow-up to my book, Bomb, and very much in the same style, a nonfiction thriller. Like Bomb, it's packed with spy stories, science, international intrigue, only it's set in the heart of the Cold War, so we're talking early 1960s, when the world's two superpowers, the United States and Soviet Union, came shockingly close to fighting what would have been the third and final world war. I say the biggest challenge with a book like this, it's, I mean, keeping it from being a thousand pages, because I love research. I think that's the most fun part, a lot more fun and easier than writing. And so I found so many cool stories and, and way more than I could ever use. And the challenge was picking the best and arranging them into a fast paced narrative. I want you to have that amazing feeling you get when you're reading a really suspenseful story. And people usually associate that with fiction or maybe watching movies, but it can be done with nonfiction too. You know, you just have to keep turning pages. I love how he associated that ter page turner. You know, I think a lot of times we don't think of nonfiction titles as page turners. And he has somehow in some beautiful way been able to do that in this title. So a great way to feature a new title or titles from a list would be to have these meet the author recordings at the ready for your readers. We're going to talk about more of those, but first I would like to get you logged in so that you have the ability to share our resources because you can freely share teaching books resources, but also save and customize things um, like lists and lessons to have at your ready uh, for your readers. So if you go to teachingbooks.net, like I said, you'll be brought to a homepage that's most likely gonna say your library name or school district name. And we're just gonna log in one step further before we get started with all of our summer reading program resources. To do that, what you're gonna wanna do is go to your three line toggle menu, select reading list, oh, sorry, select educator login here. And then you'll input your work email and select sign in. 
And once it does that, it'll prompt you for a password. If you are new and have never signed into Teaching Books before, it'll take you to a quick registration page. Once you are signed in, whoops, let me try that again. Let's do that again. There we go. Now it should work. Once you know, once you're signed in as an educator or a professional, you will know because it will say welcome in your name up here and then your institution name here. And that's how you'll know you're signed in as an educator or a professional. And that way, you know, you're going to have the ability to create and customize lists and lessons, as well as have access to all of our sharing tools, all things that we're going to be talking about today. So let's get started. And we are going to go and look just for summer reading. The easiest way to do this is just to, we have a couple of ways. You can go through for educators or for professionals, but you can also just type in summer reading up here. And summer reading will appear under the featured item here, summer reading programs. If you are on teaching books for libraries, what you will see instead of a search glass, search um, magnifying glass right here, the magnifying glass will be over here in the upper right corner. You'll just select that and then you'll do the same thing. Type in summer reading and you'll see summer reading programs under featured. Once we select there, you're going to see the different lists <clears throat> that we provide on here. These are updated yearly. So if we open up maybe Adventuregins at your library, CSLP, one thing I do want to show you, if those, if there are any of you, those of you who work with our younger readers, if we select maybe this early literacy list, we do here on Teaching Books have, well, first of all, this is what will happen when you open a list. You'll see a summary of resources for the list and then the titles within the list. But over here on the left, you can filter. And one of our newest features on Teaching Books are these phonolog phonics and phonological filters. So if you are interested in when you're, you know, like working with your younger readers or providing some resources for your community to support different phonics and phonological awareness concepts, you can see here that you could feature titles within these lists that maybe really showcase the SH sound. So your little readers, your younger readers, your emergent readers are learning to identify and hear sounds in our common reader, like read along or picture books that we're using. So you can see the different filters we have for that. Now, again, this is just from our summer reading list. All I did was type in summer. You can type in summer. All you have to type in, it really is summer. And then the summer reading programs will come up here. If you want to select another list, we will be able to explore these throughout today. But if I open up another list, we can do I read. Maybe we open up the teen list. And again, you're going to see our filters over here. You also have the option to share these lists. So if you're wanting to get these lists out to your community, you have the option to share. And with teaching books resources, you can freely share them. So you can freely share this list. And your community would have access to all the resources. You can use a link. You can send these lists home with a printable option, like a bookmark or a flyer. This is what the bookmarks look like. It will also give them sign-in information for your institution at the bottom. But they have a QR code or a link that they can select, and they'll be taken straight to that list so they can explore the list wherever they are. Again, the sharing options are here. So we have the link, the bookmark, there's a flyer you could send home or even label sheets if you wanted to put them in the book and then digital platform sharing options as well, like email. Now, if you use any of these, like the email, you can only email five people at a time. So it would probably be easier if you're gonna send an email to just copy this link and then share it with your community in an email that you compose. If we go over here to the left, I was talking about how you can filter. We can filter by resource type. The first resource we listened to today was a meet the author recording. Those are like those book talks. And if we filter by meet the author recordings, you can see which titles have meet the author recordings. So here, and there's five on this list. You could feature these titles as a way to get your readers interested in participating in the I read summer program and 
um, encouraging them to read some of these titles and listening from the authors as they talk about these titles. So let's go to our, back to our summer reading list. And I'm just gonna type in summer and select summer reading programs here. And we can do, let's do CSLP and let's explore another one on here. Let's do children. Another resource we have here on Teaching Books is book trailers. So if you're thinking of another way to feature and highlight some titles and get them maybe more usage as far as checkout goes, book trailers are a great way to do that. So if we click into, we can click in to, I know Alone has one, but you also remember over on this left side, you can filter by resource type. So let's see which ones have book trailers. And then you're gonna see 45 of the titles have book trailers. We click into Alone. Book trailers may show up under this featured area up here, but they also might show up, or they also will show up under our recording menus down here. You can see book trailer, and then we can play it. We've tried to embed these book trailers on our page so that your users will not be taken out of teaching books and into like a separate page to view the book trailers. They can just view them right from teaching books. I'm going to pause that, but, uh, you know, just another great way to feature these titles and get your community or your readers interested in reading some of these for these summer programs. Like I said before, any teaching books resource can be freely shared and all to share, all you have to do is select the red arrow. It can be under a title. It can be within a specific resource. When you select the red share arrow, a pop-up will come up with sharing options. You can share just this, re you can share this resource and then have the menu options to keep exploring. If you select this resource only, whoever you share with will only be able to see that resource. So let me show you the difference. If you select full site exploration, it's gonna look like this. They'll have the menu options. But if I select the sharing option and then select this resource only, what it will do is allow them to only view that resource that you shared with them with no option to explore from there. So however you want to do it, if you want a more focused sharing option, or if you want them to explore, you can select that within the options up here. There's your link to share. And then again, we have these printables. I showed you the bookmark. One that I didn't show you was a shelf talker because a shelf talker only works for one resource and it has to be audio or video. So if you are linking to more than one resource, like a list, it won't pop up. But this links to one book trailer, so you will see what you're viewing. It's going to ask if they want to view a book trailer or have the title a and then a code they can scan to go straight to the resource. And these really are meant to be printed. And there's a line here, a dotted line to hang over the edge of the shelf as a shelf talker. I do have some images of how librarians have used teaching book sharing options in their libraries. That's a shelf talker. This one just was a QR code that went to a movie. This was a welcome back display. So this could easily be done with as a summer reading display too. And these are those shelf talkers. Again, this librarian just put them over the edge of the books. I mentioned the labels. The labels will print um, 10 labels at a time to the same resource. So if you have multiple copies of a title or if you have a title with 
by the same author and you have multiple copies of that, you can put the author maybe introducing themselves in those copies. And that's the labels. And then if you just wanted to make a display, you could do something like this, like exploring Steam books. But again, these QR codes all go to maybe either a book trailer or the author talking about their book so that your readers get familiar with maybe some new ideas for books to check out. Or if they're just titles you want to feature, like this could be summer reading, they could learn more about some of the summer reading titles too. Same thing with a genre. You could give the same idea for a genre. Like I said, this would be very easy to do with your summer reading titles if you wanted to feature a certain list. And all you have to do when you, if you want to create kind of your own display like that, when you select share, you can easily grab the QR code by opening any of the printable options. Like I'll just open the bookmark. And then you will left click on the bookmark and you just select copy image and then you can pull it into like a piece of paper that you want to print it on or um, print it. I mean, you can add it to another image, but very simple to just copy the image from right here. So those are all of our slides with some ideas of how you can use the QR codes to just create interactive displays in your library. And again, that would be a fun dis summer reading display if you wanna use the QR codes. I always say you can even just print the bookmarks. Let me open those up again. If you just print the bookmarks, now remember these come on a page with three ready to be printed and you could have these just sitting next to the books. So they can scan the code or go to the link, but they could take these home so they can explore the resources to go with the books when they're at home too. So that's what the book the bookmarks look like. If you want to look at more and explore more to the list, remember all you're going to do is type in summer and then we select summer reading programs over here. You can click on any of these and you'll see what's available. as the accordions open. And if we go here again, and maybe this time we chat, we go to Sora Sweet Reads, maybe we do high school, we can see what titles are available. One thing you can always look for too, is if you're interested in featuring some of these summer reading lists and are looking for um, maybe discussion guides or book club ideas, we always have the option here on the filters to do book guides, activities, and lessons. And you can see what's available. Let's click in here. Once you click into the title, you'll see book guides, activities, and lessons. It's located toward the bottom. And you can see we have lessons that we've created that can be customizable, as well as maybe discussion guides from the publisher. And you can open these up. These can be freely shared. So if you were doing like a book club, you could share something like this out. So they had an idea of some questions to um, keep in mind as they're reading as well. And that's under the book guides, activities, and lessons section. I'm going to pause for just a moment. I want to make sure with anybody in here, do we have any questions before I go on and we dive a little deeper into some more resources? I've been keeping my eye on the chat and I haven't seen any questions. You are, please ask any questions in the chat if you'd like to. And I am happy to pause and answer them or I'll always take a little moment here and there to give you time to ask questions too. Can we edit the bookmark if we want to add a library name or other customization? That's a great question. I'm actually going to go look. I know that for the shelf talkers, we were able to, oops, I got to click into one specifically. Hang on. For this, for, um, for the shelf talkers, we added customization. I'm wondering if that went over to bookmarks. So let me click into here. 
And if not, I can ask about that, Linda. Let me see. So like for a loan for this, meet the author recording, you see Shelf Talker and the Shelf Talker does show institution customization right here at the top. I'm wondering if it does that on the bookmarks. Let's go see. That's a great question. I'm not certain that's in the programming yet. It doesn't look like it's in the programming yet. I'm going to make a note of that to see if that's something that's been discussed. Because like I said, we already have it on the shelf talker. So I'm wondering if that's something that is in the works for other sharing options too. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm writing it down as we speak. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, like I said, if there are more questions, feel free to ask in the chat. We're gonna talk about, so I've been showing you by searching for summer that you can find our summer reading programs and the associated lists. But you also have the opportunity to create your own list. So when if you would like to create your own list, you can start by searching maybe for a specific topic or a subject or a genre. I'm thinking maybe I want to create my own list for summer. I want to do an adventure list. You can just type adventure at the top and you'll see we have an adventure collection. It's going to bring you to a very large collection, but we're going to filter based on our filters on the left. So maybe you're thinking about what grade or age levels you want this to be for. And I'm just going to select four to eighth grade. I'm going to have this be for my middle readers. And I'm going to do a summer reading just like adventure display, maybe. So I'm going to select four, eight. But what I want to know is what are my recently awarded four, eight adventure books? Let's go see. And it looks like we have just over a hundred titles that have recently awarded, have recently been awarded. So then if I want to create that display, maybe I want to think of a resource that's going to get them interested in actually reading some of these that I'm featuring. So let's go see which ones have book trailers. Book trailers are always a nice way to get them interested. And 34 of these titles have book trailers. So this is a list I want to save because I might be choosing some of these each week to feature for, you know, during the summer, I'm going to have this adventure display. Anytime you want to create your own list on teaching books that will save for you to come back to, you're just going to select the red plus sign. You do have the option to add multiple titles to a list, or you can add a title one by one with these little plus signs under each title. We're going to add multiple, and I'm going to add all of these to a list because I think m in my head how I see this happening is each week I can um, add, do 10 titles and do a different 10 each week or each month. So I'm going to say select all titles and then I'm going to add them to a list and I'm going to say this is my summer adventure oops, display and I say add to list and I can view it and what you'll see is the list I've created. You'll see how many resources are included on this list with the titles on here. So there's 592 resources for my 34 titles. I can filter. We know they all have book trailers. And now what I can do is click into any of these. I'll do all 13. Maybe I'm going to plan on those first four are the first four I'm going to feature on in my display. I can open the book trailer up here or scroll down to book trailers down here. I can open it. You'll see Christina soon talking about her book and that's the book trailer. And then I could select the share option. And what I could do is, like I said, print bookmarks or shelf talkers and create my interactive adventure display for summer. And that's how you can quickly just create a display and feature some titles that maybe wouldn't normally get checked out or that are new. So you just you want them to get some usage. But you have the same shareable options. You can do your printables 
and create that interactive display easily. And then, like I said, your patrons can scan the code or go to the link and they'll be taken straight to that resource or straight to this book trailer with no login required. Anytime you share, whoever you share with will not have to log in to access the resource. Well, I created my list, so where is it? This is one reason why I wanted to show you at the beginning, make sure you're signed in as a professional or an educator because you need to make sure your name is up here or else you won't be able to create and save a list. As long as you are signed in as a professional or an educator, what you can go do is go to your three line toggle menu, go to your reading list and what you'll see are South Carolina lists, or sorry, state library lists, South Carolina lists, and then any list you've created. And you can click into any of these, you can print your QR codes for certain resources and you can do your featured displays with those. You also have the opportunity, maybe if I go back into my summer adventure display, you can always embed the list too. So you could even embed the list you created or any of those summer reading program lists. When you select embed list, what it will do is give you a code to use for your site, but then this is what will show up on your page. So your patrons don't have to go outside of your page into teaching books to access the resources in this summer adventure display list or in maybe one of those summer reading lists. They would click straight from your page and then they'll be taken to teaching books. So that's an option to embed the list onto your library site too. And that is always gonna be an option on any list in fact, let's go to one of these teen clouds. On any list, you'll see the embed list option in the upper left corner. Okay, I'm gonna pause for questions about lists. You can find lists by typing a subject, topic, genre, um, and you can create lists as long as you are signed in as a professional or an educator. So any questions? I have a great question on the chat and it says, what is the list analysis report? And y'all will love this because the list analysis report, I will click it. You will find it on any list. When I click into it, it gives you insights into what's represented on your list, like maybe genres or reading levels or cultural experience. You can download it um, or just view it. So let's quickly view this one. And I was just in the team book called list. That's how I got this one. But what we can see at a glance is what's represented. You can scroll down and see different uh, formats. So that was recency, cultural experience, genre, curricular area. And then what I love is it will show what's not included. So if you are creating maybe a feature list to display, Maybe you want to make sure you are featuring lots of different cultural experiences. Well, here you can see what's not included on the list above, and you can click into any of these collections and find a title to add to your list so it is represented. If we go into my very small adventure list, let's go try that. And remember, you'll just go to any list. You'll view it. And what you'll see is list analysis in the upper right corner. Now, this is a much smaller, li smaller list. So I'm, I'm interested to see what is and isn't included on this list. You can open this up. You'll see the at a glance. And then we can go down. You can see recency. Now, the recency does not surprise me. Remember, that list was created with recent award winners. So that would be within the past three years. So that's why this, this part is, is great. I knew I'd expect that. And then I see my cultural experiences. Well, when we get down farther, maybe I can say, you know what? I would like more cultural experiences celebrated in this featured list, featured display that I'm gonna do. So let's scroll down, genre, 
I would assume all of them fit in adventure because that was what I searched. <laughs> Curricular area. And then here's what's not included. So maybe in my adventure feature display, I want to include some books about women or girls. So I can go into any of these, select a title. And I was doing 4-8. So let's just do 4-8. And I did book trailers. So we can kind of just filter over here on the left to find another title to add. And I was doing recent award winners and let's see if we have any. So I could pick any of these and add it to the list I already created. So if I open up, if I select my little plus sign here, what I can do is add it to my summer adventure display. Now, the reason it didn't show up before is because this book right here is not tagged as adventure. And I'm assuming that if I go in and see, let's see, oh, adventure is showing up. Let's see if we get anything. I'm going to guess that nothing's going to come up yet. So let's take one of these off. There. It, we just have to take our filters back a bit to get an adventure title that features women or girls in it. And then we can add that to the list. But what I love about, let's go back to it. Let's go to your reading list. What I love about this list analysis is it, it gives you those insights I mean, this could even be an insight for what you might want to purchase. Maybe you run, you know, your biography collection and you do an analysis on it. You can see what is not represented and you make a wish list so that, that those can be represented in your biography collection. It's a great way maybe to justify a budget for a wish, wish list because these are things you don't have that you are hoping to have. So you have, a, you are reflecting a more diverse collection. So that's the list analysis report. Like I said, it will show up on any list in the upper right corner. Any further questions about list analysis? Okay, so another feature I would like to show you is um, a, a very great reader's advisory fixture, uh, feature. So maybe you have your reader who comes to you that's very interested in monsters. So we can go, we can type in monsters, we can see this subject term that's going to take us to a collection of titles that have monsters or reflect monsters in some way, shape, or form. And you can filter over here to find something that's going to work for this reader. reader. Um, or there's another way to do this. And I'm gonna show you, you can always type by a search term or you can start by typing in a title. Maybe you had a reader that really liked Healer of the Water Monster and they want another book just like that. We know how many times we get that. I love this book. Can I have another one like it? And that's where you're like, okay, where do I start? Well, on teaching books, if you select the title on the upper right side, you'll see a discover like books option. This is a great way to kind of prompt your readers to get more details about what it is they may have liked about that title. So for example, maybe they like the author, maybe they like the genre, but maybe they just like monsters, which is what I, what, what I had done before. Maybe they just like monsters. So let's go select monsters. And then maybe we'll do 4-8. And we're going to do more recently published ones in hopes to get them discovering some titles that maybe are just coming out that are about monsters. So what you can do is go to year published and maybe we do the past three years. And we have a, a list of 60 titles that we could create for those readers who love monsters that they can explore to determine maybe a book to read next. Again, we can do what we did before where we filter it by resource type. So maybe here we're thinking, what would get them interested? Maybe I wanna try meet the author recordings where the author talks about their books. That made this list much smaller. So you could feature these two with those meet the author recordings, You know, print a shelf talker or a bookmark. Or if you want to keep this a little bit bigger of a list for them to just explore, 
You can save this whole list by doing add multiple titles to a list. I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to call this monsters. And then I'm going to show you, let's go view it. You can share this with them. So for your, you know, avid monster readers, you could print some bookmarks and have this available for them. And when they scan this code or go to this link, they're going to be straight taken straight to that list of monsters you created for them. They can click on any of these titles, explore the resources, and see if there's something they would be interested in checking out or, you know, looking further into. So the, what, where we started here was we just clicked on a title, which was we were doing Healer of the Water Monster. And then we did Discover Like Books from here. And that just gave us enough of an idea of how to prompt them, give them an idea of why they may have liked it. Because sometimes they don't know why they like it until you start asking <laughs> for more details. Any questions about that? Now remember, there is always a help page on teaching books. Help will provide video tutorials. So if there's something I did today that you forgot how I did, there's like how to create a list or a login, you can go there. Um, honestly, the search bar is very smart on teaching books. So if you are like, where did she go for summer reading? And you just type in summer, you will find the summer reading programs over here and you can see the different lists that we have. So help will be very, very useful for you. If there's anything that you were like, I remember she did this and I can't remember where you can also always reach out to me. If there's something that you can't remember how to get to, I'm putting my email in the chat, but for the recording at cballard at overdrive.com. And one more, one more little note here under video tutorials. We also have, if you scroll down, we have these two minute takeaways and these are, these are really useful because they really hone in on how to find specific things on the site. Summer reading is included in this, just so you know. And lastly, we do have a webinar survey before I post the link and I wanna make sure we don't have any more questions. I am going to stop the recording.